Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is Room in the Inn, and we're fortunate to have with us to talk about Room in the Inn and some of the other programs associated with the uh, homeless population in Nashville and the surrounding area. Uh, Ms. Hester. Uh, Ms. Hester is uh, a coordinator of the Room in the Inn program for uh, the uh, Room in the Inn. And of course, with uh, Ms. Rachel Hester is Ms. Madeline DeMoss. Uh, Ms. Madeline DeMoss is the residential service person for Room in the Inn. Of course, Ms. Uh, Hester and uh, Mr. Moss, let me welcome the two of you to the show Thank this you. morning. Thank you. Well, and, 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 and tell you how delighted we are to uh, have you with us and to uh, have an opportunity to deal with uh, the homeless population in Nashville uh, and the surrounding areas. Uh, let's uh, see if we can start with you, uh, Ms. Rachel Hester, by having you to give us some information about your background, your uh, education, and some of the other things that were important in terms of eventually leading you to the coordinator for the uh, Room in the Inn program uh, on the uh, campus. And of course, Mr. Moss will give us the same kind of information and then we'll okay. talk about the program. That'd be great. I actually, um, I was raised, I'm a preacher's daughter, so I was raised helping people all my life. And when I came to college in 89 at Trevecca, I was going to never do that again. Mm -hmm. And what happened was very quickly I learned that that is part of me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in me. And so I became, um, interested at my congregation the next year 1990 interested at the downtown center and I've been there ever since mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and so and so you had quite a bit to do I understand I'm assessed with the establishment of the uh, room in the um, inn program. room in the inn is starting its 18th season mm -hmm. and I've been there 13 years Madeline's been there from mm -hmm. the beginning mm -hmm. and we were just a staff of three or four always mm -hmm. so you did what you had to do <laughs> okay very good so. and mr. Balls. I actually started with Room in the Inn at mm -hmm. Holy Name. When the first year, mm -hmm. there were only four congregations that participated, and mm -hmm. we brought people into. That's when they used to lower the flags according mm -hmm. to the temperature and all. And uh, it is going into its 18th season, mm -hmm. and I have a lay minister background from the Diocese of Nashville. Mm -hmm. But I was just a person at uh, Holy Name and got involved and through Charles Strobel. And I've been with it ever since. It is something that gets into your blood mm -hmm. and you, you can't give it up. If they become family, they become a part of you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Ms. Esther, let's see if we can uh, have a, a, a good definition for okay. the room in the inn. Because I think that a lot of folks know about the program, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the operation of it and, and, and that aspect of it, uh, very, very few people might be aware of that. So let's have you and Mr. Moss okay. give us some information about the Room in the Inn concept itself and what you're trying to achieve with that concept. Well, room in the Inn is an emergency winter shelter. And I think what makes us unique from other shelters throughout the country are, is that it, we are not in one major building. What we do is people are sent out in small groups of 10 to 15 to congregations. And what we hope that happens at those congregations is more than shelter and a meal to eat, but relationships that are built on both sides mm -hmm. for those that have and those that have not to see that both have something to give. Mm -hmm. And so this concept, Mr. Moss, is, 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 is quite uh, uh, old in Nashville here for the last 18 years. It and, is. And so and you've been with it since the very, very beginning. I have from the beginning. Let's talk about the beginning of uh, that uh, idea. I mean, how did it uh, start originally? Actually, it started with Charles Strobel looking out the rectory windows and people would be in their cars. Mm -hmm. And winters used to really be colder here. Mm -hmm. And they would turn the motor on until they ran out of gas, literally. Mm -hmm. They would just try to keep warm. And they'd huddle in the doorways. Holy Name's right there at the intersections of the major interstates. Mm -hmm. So when people would get off the interstate or whatever, they would be there. It also had the Loaves and Fishes program mm -hmm. that was at, located at the church. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the poor and the homeless came there anyway. And it was a, literally his guilty conscience. He couldn't go to sleep at mm -hmm. night with people sleeping in their cars in the doorway. So mm -hmm. he just opened up the doors. Mm -hmm. And he started it really just opening up the doors mm -hmm. and going from there. Mm -hmm. And so that first winter, he had four congregations that joined with him when he mm -hmm. shared the ideas. Mm -hmm. And it has grown from four to 156 congregations right. that mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. And it is mainly, like Rachel said, it's trying to get people to understand that the homeless aren't any different from mm -hmm. anybody else. And it's that one-on-one -on -one connection and people listening to them mm -hmm. that give them hope again. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, his church mm -hmm. was the, the founding church in a real sense, and that's what we're talking about. I think the two of you mentioned congregations. But what, we, what, what you're saying is that uh, uh, the churches, various churches throughout the city, 
will provide uh, places for these individuals who are homeless. That's right, as uh, well as the temple and the Jewish synagogue. Uh, That's why we uh, really say congregations mm -hmm. instead of churches, churches because uh -huh. we have uh, so many different uh, faith-based uh, programs that work with us. But the idea is that you're sending folks all over town we are. And, and, and these various faith-based uh, institutions are protecting them and taking we care are. of them. Mm -hmm. We send them to Williamson County, to Sumner County. People will pick them up and take them on. Okay, and so what we'll do when we come back uh, during the second segment, we'll give our audience some additional information. Okay. In okay. to that. We'll be back with you following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Ms. Rachel Hester.